Hello, Mrs H here. There is a lot of specific language to learn in biology and lots of marks can be lost in exams due to incorrect words or terminology being used, using vague words and spelling mistakes. In this video, I will be sharing some of the most common mistakes so that you don't make them in your exam. First up, energy cannot be produced. This is the most common mistake I see. Mitochondria do not produce energy and energy is not produced from respiration. Instead, you need to write mitochondria release energy or energy is released from the process of respiration. The nervous system consists of specialized cells called neurons. Sensory neurons carry impulses from the receptor to the relay neurons in the central nervous system and motor neurons carry impulses from the central nervous system to the effectors. Never use the word messages, signals or information. Instead use electrical impulses, nervous impulses or just impulses. Terminology around immunity and vaccination can be tricky for a lot of students. Which statement is correct about vaccination? A dead or weakened pathogen is injected into the patient or the patient is injected with a little bit of the disease. The second statement is a common answer, but you can't inject a disease. A disease occurs within the person due to the pathogen. So the first statement is correct and make sure you do write that the pathogen is dead or weakened. When we learn about immunity, students often write your body remembers the disease. There are a few things wrong with this sentence. First of all, your body remembers. Well, which part of your body? Your little toe? Your hand? You need to be specific and write that it is your white blood cells. And then there's an issue with the word remember. Your white blood cells can't remember. Instead, they can recognize antigens on the pathogen's surface. And if you want to be really specific, you can write B lymphocytes recognize the antigens on the pathogen. And while we are talking about antigens and antibodies, these are often muddled up. So which is which? Antigens are protein markers found on the surface of infected cells or pathogens and antibodies are proteins that are made by our cells, our B lymphocytes. And these antibodies can attach to pathogens or infected cells and neutralize them or attract phagocytes over to engulf and destroy the infected cell or pathogen. The pancreas secretes a hormone called insulin if the blood glucose is too high. But what is the name of the hormone released when blood glucose is too low? Is it glycogen, glucagon or glycogon? The correct answer is glucagon. The confusion is there because insulin enables glucose to get into the cell and then converts excess glucose not used in respiration into glycogen, a stored sugar, Glucagon is the hormone that converts glycogen back into glucose and this glycogon is a mix of the two words together. It doesn't mean anything. It's very confusing because the words are very similar. Saying glycogen and glucagon out loud can help you to remember the differences in their spellings. When looking at near objects, the ciliary muscles contract and the suspensory ligaments slacken, enabling the lens to bulge. Students will then go on to say, light is refracted more or more light is refracted. One of these sentences is correct, despite both answers looking very similar. The placement of the word more is so important here. Light is refracted more is correct. When linking adaptations to natural selection, the phrase adapted to is misused and it's not surprising when you hear this phrase on TV documentaries. So which is correct? The animal plant becomes adapted to its surroundings or environment or animals plants that are better adapted to their environment are more likely to survive. We know that sexual reproduction and mutations in DNA and alleles are what cause variation and therefore adaptations. Then it is the animals or plants that are better adapted to their environment that will survive. They haven't just suddenly become adapted. They were born with these adaptations. 
And if these adaptations mean they are more likely to survive, then they're more likely to reproduce and pass on those beneficial alleles to their offspring. When you answer osmosis questions, it is easier to use this set phrase in your answer, but make sure you say water concentration because if you leave the word water out, then your answer will be ambiguous. Osmosis is the movement of water molecules from a high water concentration to a low water concentration through a partially permeable membrane. Leaving out the word water then implies concentration of solute. You can do this, you could answer in another way, from a dilute solution to a more concentrated solution, but that just makes what you need to remember confusing. So I suggest just sticking with the definition here. This one is more for physics. The confusion between mass and weight is not surprising when anywhere outside of a science classroom, these words are used interchangeably. However, we must get them correct. Mass is the amount of matter, Weight is the force exerted on an object by gravity. Mass is measured in grams, kilograms, and weight in newtons. So you will have the same mass on Earth as you would if you're on the moon, but because there's less gravity on the moon, you would weigh less. Anyway, in biology, we just use mass and we never mention weight. Here are some words not to use in biology because they are too vague. First one amount. Whenever you want to write this word, think about what this amount is. Do you mean volume or concentration or mass? Average. There are different kinds of average. Are you referring to the mode, the median or the mean? In biology, we can use all three, but we tend to use the mean the most. Affects. The word effect comes up a lot in exam questions. The examiner uses the word effect in the question, which is inviting your answer to be specific. E.g. Explain how having yellow leaves can affect the growth of a plant. If I use the word effect in my answer, it will be yellow leaves affect the absorption of sunlight, which affects the rate of photosynthesis. So this affects how much glucose is made, etc. You can see how my answer can be improved greatly by replacing the word affect with a specific word. Yellow leaves decrease the absorption of sunlight, which decreases the rate of photosynthesis. So this decreases the mass of glucose made. In a similar situation, try not to write the word change or different without writing how whatever it is has changed. For example, there has been a change in mass. Well, has it increased or decreased? Or the solution has changed colour. What colour did it change from and to? Was it from blue to orange? So be specific, don't use the word change or different. If you write the word nutrient, then make sure you give the name of the specific nutrient required, e.g. nutrients such as glucose and amino acids are absorbed into the blood or the plant transports minerals and water from the roots to the rest of the plant through the xylem. Don't ever leave the word nutrient without the name of a specific nutrient. Remember, there are lots of different nutrients, for example, proteins, amino acids, fats, which is your fatty acids and glycerol, glucose, minerals, starch and vitamins. We have to use the word it, but wherever you do, read back your answer to make sure it is clear to the examiner what it is referring to. And finally, just a few common spelling mistakes. Adaptation, not adaption. This is a quadrat, not a quadrant. And temperature, not temperature. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching. If you found this useful, please like and subscribe for more content and visit biologybreakdown.co.uk.